everyone anthony mars jr on pr lost galaxy 2014 with a brand new terra venture podcast to share within the entire power rangers fandom at large as always and i bring you guys podcast episode 192 presented by pr lost galaxy 2014's facebook page and my morphin megaverse power rangers facebook group if you have not seen any of these or so if you haven't followed me on social media by now and so forth check them out now So it's been two years since I've heard of the MMPR fan film, the dark and gritty Power Rangers fan film that everyone has been following since late 2012, early 2013. And I know two years has passed after, if you guys remember seeing my earlier video uh, response to the filmmaker behind MMPR, Dominic Silvey, if I got his name right this time, because I had a hard time pronouncing his name the first time, first couple of times when discussing his fan film. And I have to realize, well, and just thinking back to those trailers that I've seen and what, why everybody was talking about this project. I mean, when we had fan films of other Power Rangers, you know, uh, fan film, fan films of Power Rangers like Zordon of Eltar surpassed MMPR. I just really need to open up and, uh, and address this because this is something I pretty much hesitated to readdress because I think I also need to owe the filmmaker behind the fan film and everyone associated with it in an apology. Because two years ago, when for those, for the many a thousand that see my video where I was addressing about the fan film, I have to realize I was being too egotistical about my fan film, A Power Rangers, getting in the way along with that, and thinking that when this film was about to come out, I, I, I had a fear that nobody would appreciate my film. But you know that my film was, you know, you know, my Power Rangers fan film was, you know, garbage and, you know, from the from the get go, because people didn't appreciate um, in the beginning why I went with the paper doll puppet route thing. But it was my intention because I decided to go with the puppet thing. And because I felt that no one I knew in my area who are who aren't fans of Power Rangers are just like me to do the film in in full live action where you know costumes would be a, appropriate to be used so that way I can have these people in the costumes and the props for you know like you know anything because knowing that I don't have the money and I don't have the material to make the helmets or the costumes for the for the for the Rangers and um, but. Looking at MMPR, I have to realize, and I underestimated this fan film and based on its visual appeal, it is very visually entertaining. But actually, only the trailers itself, but we just never got to see, it's just the, the full movie never got to be made. But we only did get episode one, which I saw on YouTube a couple of months ago, and that's been very long ago this, this year, this quarter. But um, from what I recall, when... The reason why, aside from the backer money and also the decline of the full release of MMPR, um, Dominic Sylvie, who was the who was the director and such of the fan film, had a personal family matter behind the scenes before the film or so would even be released. And it was going to take a while. It was going to take months and months. No wonder everybody kept, you know, has, you know, kept waiting and and waiting and waiting for the film to, to fully come out and every single part of it too. Um, from what I recall, Sylvie's mother um, was his main fo- was his side focus aside, you know, from the fr- from his pr- you know pursuing on the project. That's why he worked it. That's why he had to spend some time off the movie for off his you know project for a while, and focus on his family matter about his mother dying from an illness. And uh, I feel sorry for and Dominic. I feel very sorry that your mother uh, passed away. And just recently, my father passed away last month from a cardiac arrest. Now I know how that felt. 
Well, I don't start my next Power Rangers fan film until next year in January, but I don't want the buttheads with Saban and Lionsgate's new Power Rangers movie because I'm going to spend two years on the thing, uh, you know, on my thing. So, but I just feel really sorry, Dominic, that, you know, for the loss of your mother. And I, I, I really, really, really feel very sorry. I feel very sorry for that. And then, um, not to mention it, about the visual and such appeal in the casting. Of course, you do have Ron Wasserman, the legendary composer who has done every song for Power Rangers up until SPD. And then afterwards, well, of course, his Mystic Force demo wasn't, you know, well received by Disney because they felt his themes, his rock and rap themes weren't judging, budging well with Mystic Force. Um, and then, of course, you've got David Fielding, known for playing Zordon in the original series. And, of course, Robert Axelrod, the voice of Lord Zed. So there are only, th only three legendary Power Ranger um, cast slash crew of looms get to do, ha have jobs in this film. Now, you know, at first when I, saw, when I heard of M the MMPR fan film, I... Under S, I just really didn't want to take it seriously. I was not into this seeing Power Rangers dark gritty thing. That was until that Power Slash Rangers film come along, but we'll get to that in a second. But when I thought about, when I saw the first, when I saw some random fan film trailer of someone's Power Rangers fan film in such high concept and everything, I didn't want to accept it for looking dark and gritty because even though this is the kind of thing that a lot of fans for actually those who were former Power Ranger fans have been dying to want for so many years because I guess there are people out there who are just sick and tired of campy, cheesy, cartoony, colorful Power Rangers and go for the more modern, dark, gritty, Dark Knight-esque approach of the Power Rangers in a film. Because that's pretty much what everybody pretty much wants nowadays. And I sort of did like it, but I still wanted to go geared toward faithful to the actual ser to the main series where it was always colorful and campy and cheesy and where the one liners at times cannot make sense and things. And also seeing the characters and, you know, with the Rangers and spandex and the helmets with their unique visors and things. Yeah, that's the kind of Power Rangers I still want to still want to you know keep in to the bottom of my heart. But the dark gritty stuff, I don't mind it. But unless it, I mean, the only way you're gonna have to, um, the only way you can do the dark gritty um, aspect to these fan films is you just got to be careful how you're handling the genre of dark and gritty realism. While you're still, while you at least you can try to add some comedy in there as you know as a sub stubble uh substance behind the film and one of the few elements that needs to be needed in order for, for it to be a good power rangers film i mean i don't want to see no further new power rangers fan film dark and gritty as it is where it's going to end up being like the next power slash rangers film which joseph Kahn bastardized doing because you know i know it's been okay let's talk about this compared to power slash rangers now, when Power Slash Rangers came out, a lot of fans of the Power Rangers fandom, especially former fans, have felt that that film early, that we got earlier this year was the more definitive uh, Power Rangers movie, fan, fan movie, where it could be dark and gritty, but at the same time, you know, do it in a fashion that Hollywood couldn't do because they feel that they like to look Power Rangers down upon because they still, you know, disregard it. Even like Khan, who directed that piece of garbage again, said that it, the film was, um, that he wanted to do something that Hollywood would, would have did if they were to take on a franchise that was a, an extremely silly children's property. But Dominic Sylvie, with his MMPR fan film, on the other hand, at least he's, he knows exactly what he is doing with his reimagining take on the Power Rangers, um, but mostly only Mighty Morphin. And I do think that his reimagining of Mighty, uh, his reimagining of Power Rangers is actually better than Joseph Kahn's, you know, non-fan like reimagining where it's just too grueling to watch with all the blood and the violence and the, the character deaths. It was unnecessary. 
And of course, I never did caught on to the fact that Power Slash Rangers it's in itself was actually a satire of Hollywood's current, you know, you know what, <laughs> ongoing stick of, you know, making remaking every children's property that we loved from our childhoods, our ever delightfully color, you know, you know, colorful childhoods, and then bring them into this gritty, sadistic, depressing, you know, state of realism. And that's what I felt I didn't appreciate out of Power Slash, you know, I did not like out of Power Slash Rangers. And it seems that I also, again, have to, in an accommodation and an apology to the filmmakers behind MMPR, the fan film, that I should have never said what I said two years ago, thinking my Power Rangers Lost Galaxy fan film was going to be better when no one, actually, I had to realize and wake up and realize that, you know, my fan film was nothing, actually. I mean, I made it for nothing. I, I was just only doing it for my personal entertainment and nobody else's because of the whole paper doll thing. But if you wanted to do your gritty Power Rangers film and, well, at the same time, keep it faithful to the series, good for you, Dominic. But I, 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 have, to appreci I have to apologize and open up to what I've said two years ago, and, but say, it's similar, say it in a similar way. Because... I think your movie is better than Power Slash Rangers. It really is, because at least your Power Rangers fan film does not have blood and drugs and characters cussing or characters having sex. At least we don't have that kind of stuff. And at least I don't see that kind of stuff in your movie. Your movie is trying to be... Your, at least your movie... You see, Dom, your Power Rangers movie reminds me so much of some of the drama shows that I see on, you know, <laughs> primetime television, but if we had a primetime, you know, Power Rangers, like, web series or something, and if this was, like, NCIS or uh, any of the shows you have on sci-fi, like Defiance or Haven or Content Continuum or Dark Matter or any of that stuff on TV, um, where you have these kind of shows with this high-tech, highly advanced uh, production quality where it's all gritty and real looking that's exactly what your movie reminds me this is exactly what your power rangers project fan project reminds me of it reminds me so much of some of the shows that i forementioned especially something that if sci-fi were to do uh their own similar power ranger like show but isn't power ranger based but take the inspiration of the franchise's overall substance and make it something exactly like that you know what i'm saying and taking the franchise to this more Dark Knight, um, though, yeah, I did had some criticism about the whole film going dark and gritty, going like the Dark Knight and, you know, all of that Michael Bay's Transformers approach thing. But that's what Power Sla the Power Slash Rangers film did. I mean, mixing elements of Kill Bill and, you know, the Kill Bill movies and Terminator Salvation and, and uh, <laughs> um, the first G.I. Joe movie and just put all of those elements into a blender and what do you get with and also with elements of power rangers and you put them all in a blender and make people think that, that this is going to be an actual good movie although i i you know when when power slash rangers came out in february eight months ago now at the time when this video was posted i couldn't after ta watching that garbage piece of crap fan film of joseph Kahn's of the franchise 21 different 21 freaking times I couldn't accept Power Slash Rangers for what it was. And still to this day, I still can't, you know, accept it for what it is. Yeah, sure, it, it had characters from Power Rangers is, uh, names labeled onto the to the actors playing characters that aren't really actually the characters. Besides the two actors who played Tommy and, um, of course, Carla Perez, who was on the show actu actually, in, actu in actuality, who was Rita in costume on the show up until in space. And, but everyone else was like, you know, from the performances of Katie Sackoff, <laughs> James Vanderbeek, <laughs> Ganchi Goomba, wherever his name is, who played the Black Ranger, <laughs> and everyone else was just, really, I mean, they just had some really horrible performances, and I felt that the acting wasn't top-notch, in my opinion, in that film. Not, I mean, the, uh, but although the visual effects were okay. I mean, the, the CG effects and everything, and the realism of, you know, if, if this was Angel Grove or the Power Rangers continuity in futuristic times, and, like, suppose if the fan film was set during RPM's continuity, uh, where, well, if the, if the Mighty Morphin, uh, if the Mighty Morphin Rangers were set in 
you know rpms his own continuity and in this new in that in its own standalone time this new standalone timeline but it's actually just a fan film but where you have the mighty Morphin rangers in a bootlegged fan film such universe where they have to deal with instead of just you know rita and zed like they usually do they dealt with the, the threat that the zeo rangers faced when knowing tommy was one of the zeo rangers and knowing that that film ugh, i can't even speak no more about that film but your fan film but dominic your power rangers fan film and i'm saying this also as a video response during this podcast as well that your film looks more visually appealing than power slash rangers because at least again your movie does not have blood and and all that violence and drugs and everything because or even characters shooting up on drugs for that matter because that's not because like in Khan's piece of garbage film that wasn't Power Rangers. Yeah, sure, you have the costumes, you have you know Ranger suits that look like Power Ranger costumes, but knowing that the only two Ranger helmets, knowing that the only two Rangers that had the full close-ups on those suits is the pink and the black Rangers. Everyone else was like, I can barely even see what they look like. But I, I get the, I get just where your movie was going, and then also your cast. I mean, you got three females and two males as your uh, new team of uh, new generation of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Very cool. Uh, I thought about the exact same thing when I did my film until you know, of course, everybody you know bashed it because of you know the crappy quality and everything. But um. Yeah, I didn't mind about having a female Blue Ranger or so because, uh, you know, of course, we've had that formula before back in Ninja Storm and Mystic Force when the Blue Ranger was a female. Um, and then seeing the fact that the blue, pink and yellow Rangers were twin sisters. Wow, that's new. That's new to the picture. Really something. And then also the Black Ranger, at least in your version, like in the actual series, that the Black <laughs> the black Ranger is also a black guy, too. At least you're keeping, even though regardless, no matter how what, what year it is, it's still like Mighty Morph in Season 1, the Black Ranger will still be a black guy. At least you got that right. And the Red Ranger, of course, you that's you only have like you know have him as a the only Caucasian male in the group. Everyone else, I mean, knowing that the three female to male ratio thing, I think that's exactly what should be a new formula to set for. If Sentai, if Toei does a new Sentai series, you know, a new Sentai series where the Red Ranger is a female and she is the leader of the team, hence that we don't even have that much female Reds in Sentai or Power Rangers. And I would have loved it if you were to do a sequel fan film or fan series of MMPR. What if you did your own team of Rangers that isn't based on any existing team or mostly existing MMPR? What if you were to create your own team of Power Rangers that may or have some relation or your own uh, original relation to the Mighty Morphin team? And if you were to make the Red Ranger a girl? Now, how now I, I would have minded it if you did your fan film over, if you were to make your female Blue Ranger the Red Ranger, and we would have a male Blue Ranger. That would that would do some justice with your movie. That's just my little personal opinion on what I think your what you could have did with the one of the two one of the three females in your Ranger team, because we don't even have a, have that much of female Red Rangers that, that as it is in the franchise, but. The female Blue Ranger and having the Blue Ranger as the leader of the team. Now, that was something quite original from you. And kudos to you, Dominic, for making the Blue Ranger the leader because I think a lot of people are tired of the Red Ranger being the leader of every, you know, freaking team. Um, you know, although, of course, we did have a couple of female Rangers that, de that did lead a Ranger team. You know, first being Delphine. You know the red. You know, I mean the white ranger of Aquatar from Alien from the Alien Ranger saga, and of course Jen from Power Rangers Time Force Time Force Pink. So having a female Blue Ranger did work, and, and it, I guess it may be it, it may be something and make her pretty much make her more like a female Tommy Oliver. But as if, if Tommy <laughs> was the Blue Ranger, or you know, or Ta you know, call her Tammy or, or something like that. You know, whatever whatever worked. Um, and, uh, Lord Zed with a, with a very demented human form. You know, I've seen the poster every time I even Google search MMPR fan film, every time I see your version of Lord Zed, it's like, I'm seeing Darth Vader, Darth Maul meets Freddy Krueger, 
but it's Lord Zed, you know, like a Freddy Krueger, Darth Maul hybrid, you know, you know, being holding and wielding Lord Zed's, you know, you know, wielding Zed's uh, Z staff. And that's exactly what, you know, his, you know, design looks like when you, the way how you reimagine Lord Zed. If Lord Zed looked at like Freddy Krueger meets Darth Maul, you know, but with the hood on and such, and holding that staff. And of course, the tagline. Um, I really underestimated the tagline for the film, you know, the whole evil rebuilt power reborn. And I couldn't took, I, I, you know, when I heard that tagline from your couple of trailers, even though you had a hard time trying to put your whole film out due to your little personal matters, but I really did think that the whole evil rebuilt power reborn should be a new standout, is a new standout. Because even, I think all of us Power Ranger, you know, all of us fans of the franchise and for filmmakers, um, you know, and inspire filmmakers, if we're going to do fan films of any franchise, including Power Rangers, I think this is the, the kind of better approach and the more better insp inspiring role model of a inspiration to follow from you when it comes to reimagining the Power Rangers mythos. I mean, Cisco Davis, my friend, your films of Zordon and Veltar was great and all, and I, and I still liked your approach on your Power Rangers movies, but Dominic Sylvie, Sylvie, I really underestimated his approach on the Power Rangers in terms of reimagining. But Joseph Kahn's film, <laughs> garbage. So it's, it's best off that you're the more inspiration you're a bigger inspiration to further and you know their coming fans um for that matter to do a more gritty realistic power rangers film but at least you have to, at least you're keeping something faithful to the actual series where of course you've got the great ron wasserman you got david fielding zordon himself you got ron was i mean i'm sorry um robert axelrod Lord Zed himself. I mean, there you got three alums from the actual Power Rangers uh, TV series in your film, and that's pretty much a major plus. Um, of course, and even like back when I saw the Zordon and Veltar fan film where they had cosplayer Sony Arlen, who is a big Power Ranger fan herself, uh, do Diva Tox in her film. And I felt her approach of Diva Tox was uh, pretty good. And um, also the actress who played uh, Rita in that fan film, she was pretty good too. Um, so, even though you got an actor to play the re reborn, reimagined Lord Zed, but you know, well, in terms of his human form, but I just never under, but I never found out who the actor was. I haven't been on IMDb yet and stuff. So, and then also most of the actors you got for the Rangers and everyone else and the Silver Guardians. And also speaking of which, the Silver Guardians, you really got me there with your little Time Force reference. You were very pretty sneaky throwing a Time Force. Uh, element into the into a mighty morphin based movie and knowing and, and i'm and i'm figured now how does the silver guardians fit in the mighty morphin era i mean this mighty morphin little thing you just did and knowing that silver guardians was of the time force era and not mighty morphin era because that's what got me that's what got me the most. I, I just really underestimated it. And then Silver Guardians, I mean, yeah, because, you know, the Silver Guardians were great, you know, supporting characters in Time Force when, you know, especially when Eric, who was, you know, of course, the Quantum Ranger, you know, leading the Silver Guardians under, you know, Wes is his father, is his company. Um, and then Project Ranger. I think you were also being a little slick that you also threw a little small notion for those of the RPM uh, the RPM side of the Power Rangers fan base that you were going to add Project Ranger into this thing. I, I think when I was watching RPM, I don't think I recall not one episode of RPM have I ever heard Dr. K mention the words Project Ranger. I guess I met, must have misheard while watching RPM. I think I need to rewatch the whole series of RPM again and see if I was correct or incorrect on that point. So all in said that, you know, the MMPR fan film, I feel that was, it, it looks better. It's a more, uh, a more dark and gritty, accurate fan film reimagining of the Power Rangers. And it is, it is indeed way better than Power Slash Rangers. 
And I mean, don't get me wrong, Dom. I mean, your movie was better. And I feel that the fans, and I know, you know, my dear friend, fellow subscriber and such, you know, John of Mr. Weenie Productions, he has been looking for this film of yours for the last two years. And I know, despite the many delays of having the film out and everything, and Kickstarter, you know, what, what you was going with, with your little fiasco with Kickstarter about the backer money for it. I mean, all has been done. All is said, my friend, and all, all is forgiven. And also, I even have to continue my my condolence of your you know your fallen family ma family member that you've lost uh, for you know and then also as much as i've lost my father but at least when i when i you know i don't start my next movie until you know january or if not february so i won't have to butt heads when saban and lionsgate does their uh power rangers um reboot film you know, which is going to, going to be filmed between January to April, so I cannot be heading butts, you know, butting heads with Saban and Lionsgate, and I don't want, you know, Saban and Lionsgate <clears throat> trying to shut my film down and make people think that my next Power Rangers uh, fan film is going to compete with their movie, and which it is not, because my next Power Rangers film will be released in time for one of my favorite seasons, is 20th anniversary in four years from now, so... I have plenty of time to fill, take some time off from this fan film stuff and focus on some personal endeavors for now. So, and for the fandom yourselves, I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to see this fan film, but the only part of it is just episode one where it's the pink and yellow ranger focused episode short. And it's already on the MMPR fan film YouTube channel. If you've already seen it, good for you. I've already seen it too, but I wanted to keep my opinion on it a little bit discreet. I didn't want to officially spout out and say, well, after all this waiting and after hearing people talk about it, I realized this film sucked. I, I, I'm not going to say it, you know what it means. I am not going to say it because um, I don't want to hurt the filmmakers and, and the actors behind this thing uh, um, uh, feelings because... You know, how would you like if someone was hurting my feelings because, well, even though I've had a couple of people come by to my channel and talk to crap about my movie, although, again, I will continue doing what I do best with my Power Rangers uh, fan film thing. So I don't want to hear no hatred and all of that. I'm just going to, you know, mute and censor hate comments and everything about, you know, future stuff that I do on the channel of mine. So, but Dominic, I hope your the rest of your Power Rangers fan film fan series thing comes out as soon as possible. I want, I mean, I, I can't wait to see the whole thing for the first time for myself. As much as I totally again mis you know misjudged and underestimated your project, and I and I'm just deeply sorry for the loss of your again your family, one of your family members, and it, it's just a striking chord to the heart. Just seeing you lose someone that raised you for, you know, your whole life and stuff. And, um, and also kudos to the cast in your movie. Um, I hope they do a very good job when I see them all full on screen because it, it's something that's going to be a benefit for the best. And I know I haven't used that to earn benefit for the best since uh, last year um, because I know it's been a long time. So, anyway, that's the end of the comment. That's the end of the uh, discussion video here for MMPR fan film. And for your thoughts, what do you guys think was the better dark and gritty Power Rangers fan film? This or Joseph Kahn's bastardized, unauthorized, bootleg piece of garbage Power Rangers film that we had back earlier this uh, February? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, and I'm all for now. I hope to see this film when it fully comes out in its full entirety. If it does, and I hope it will. Anthony Mars Jr. on PR, Lost Galaxy 2014. Subscribe, drop a like, share this video with your friends, and now follow me also on Instagram. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you, and good night.